In this quick tutorial, I'll show you how to find the domain and range of a function. This is part one of this series. The domain is the set of all values that the independent variable can take on, and usually we assign the independent variable as our x. The range is the set of values that the dependent variable, y, takes on as the independent variable varies throughout the domain. And this is usually the trickier of the two to find. Let's start with question number one. In question number one, they're asking us to find both the domain and range for y is equal to 5 over x minus 3. A little tip for you is that when determining the domain, we want to find all the values of x for which the function is not defined. So take a look at this function. What can't x be? We know that this denominator cannot be 0 because if it goes to 0, then it becomes undefined. Any number divided by 0 doesn't work. So what we have to do is we have to set the denominator, x minus 3, to not equal to 0. And then treat this not equal sign as an equal sign and solve for x. That will tell us what x can't be. So x cannot equal to positive 3 because if you bring this 3 over, it becomes positive, And if you apply 3 into here, it becomes 0. So therefore, our domain for this function are all real numbers. And this r right here represents all real numbers, where x cannot equal to 3. Before we proceed, I want to make a note that some teachers will have their own preferred method of notating the domain and range. So this is the informal way of doing it, but there is also a more formal way which would look like this. You would introduce a curly bracket, x in this line, and then what x can't be, so x can't be 3, then brackets all real values of x. So that's the more formal way of representing the domain. Now we can move on to the range. Now the range requires a little bit of logic. It's not a simple systematic way. You have to ask yourself, what can't y be? Now we know y can never equal to zero. Think about it. What value can you possibly put into x that will result into a y that is zero? Nothing. So y cannot equal to zero. And the way we write this is that y includes all real values where it cannot equal to zero. And that's it. Let's move on to question number two. In question number two, they ask us to find the domain and range of this function. Now we know from past examples that if the radicand, which is the number that represents what's inside of this radical, is a negative number, you cannot evaluate it to a real number. So we know that this radicand right here, x plus 5, has to be greater than 0, or even equal to 0. The next thing that we'll do is solve for x, and this will represent our domain x is greater or equal to negative 5. That is the domain for this function. And the way we represent this formally is we introduce the squiggly bracket, x, and this line, x, then your argument, where x includes all real values. And that's it. That is your domain. Let's move on now to the range. Once again, we have to take a logical stance on this. What can't y be in a situation like this? Well, if you think about it, the lowest value that this can be is 0. And if we place a negative 5 plus 5 and we square root it, we end up with the square root of 0, which gives us 0. However, we also have this plus 3, which means that y can only be greater or equal to plus 3. That is your range. y must be greater or equal to plus 3. Let's write that down formally. We're going to introduce these curly brackets. And we're going to put this line in our argument. y needs to be greater or equal to 3. And this includes all real values of y. And there you have it. Two examples on how to find the domain and range of functions. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at studyforce.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.